Hey folks, this your girl Lotus for Shade with Lotus for Shade Nights Life Coaching and Consulting. And today I'm back with a wonderful guest, Cheryl Lynn Ivernesky. She's going to join me today and we're going to give you guys some great information that's going to help you help yourself and help your family members, friends, co-workers, and even your frenemies live a better and healthier life. We're going to give you some excellent tips that we just got in a broadcast that we received last night, some information we received last night. So if you would, please help me, help me, help me. Welcome, Miss Cheryl Lynn Ivernisky. Hey, Cheryl, how are you, darling? Hey, hi, Lotus. How are you today? I am doing wonderful. Listen, I've got Journey on the box. Don't I me. love Journey. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, folks, we're going to let this play a little bit. This is Journey. Don't stop believing. So, please come on in. Come on in. And if you like this song by Journey, go ahead and shoot up some hearts and some thumbs up and put a big fat number one in the listing. This is Journey. Don't stop believing because we don't want you to stop believing and we are not going to stop believing in you. So today, as we get ready, Sherlyn and I are going to talk to you, give you some tips and some information that we got on last night's broadcast. And we want to thank everybody that joined us from all over the globe last night and chat and, and kind of chimed in and gave us some great information on how to help other people help themselves be as healthy and as positive as they possibly can be. So we're about to get right into it. As you come on in, please be sure to like, share, and start a watch party as we get going, okay? Oh, and don't forget, make sure you have something to drink. We're not going to be before you long, but while we're with you, we want to share a nice glass of water, tea, or whatever it is, your beverage of choice. So, Lynn, um, I, I love Journey, too. Journey is phenomenal. really love the song. So, yes. thanks so much for joining me again today as we uh, move through these different segments of helping people help themselves to be as healthy and as positive as they can possibly can using holistic methods. And you so, just said something so key, and that is being positive. Yes. You know, we want the positive energy. We want the good vibes. And, you know, songs like Don't Stop Believing, and that takes me back to the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. but great song, great music. And, you know, music's really important. Sound therapy and music is really important. Yes, it is. And we want to send a special shout out to Medea. Hey, Medea, thank you so much for joining us. I want to shout out to Angie. Thank you so much for joining us. We're super happy to have you here. And you Medea says hello to everybody. So thank you so much for joining us. And please send this out to your friends, frenemies, <laughs> good folks, uh, uh, challenging folks, and, and everybody else that you can connect with across your social media platform. Today, again, we have Cheryl Lynn Ivaneski with us, and we're going to be talking about some information that we got on a broadcast last night. And I think Medea furnished this information to us. So thanks again, Medea, yeah. for sharing this information. So Lynn, why don't you share with the folks some of what we talked about and what we're going to talk about? So some of the things we talked about yesterday were like immune boosting things that we can do for ourselves. And we spent, you know, most of yesterday and last night talking about the quality and quantity of sleep that is so important for our immune system because it's one of the things that we have the most control over. It's yes. free and it's something that you know is up to us to do. So we gave great tips on how to prepare ourselves for sleep because mm -hmm. that's a really big part of it. And mm -hmm. Dia was really great. I loved what she added. She added some really great information about when we're preparing for going to sleep, the benefits of having Epsom salts. Um, and that's something that I live for because I'm a bath woman. I love that. So um, I thank you so much for that, Medea. So that added to our how to prepare us for sleep and how to have a really good night's sleep and how years ago, I think it was um, 1920s when we used to get yes. nine, nine hours of sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how now on average we get less than seven, around 6.8. And if you're a teen, even less. So yeah. we're looking at what we're looking at for adults in between the seven and a half to eight and a half hour 
of sleep and everyone's different, but the more you can get the better. And as we age, we even need more. So that was really important. So today we got some really great information from Medea and some others as well that we're going to share because it's just brand new um, information in the last, the last night's not even 24 hours yet. Exactly. So, you know, in the last 18 to 20 hours. And so that's really important. We want to share that. And then what's coming up in the next couple of days are those also immune boosters that are specific to different vitamins, stress management, um, other supplements, and um, our, our biggie, which is going to be some really cool herbs and spices too. Exactly. Exactly. So if you haven't had a moment to share this, go ahead and share this on your on your timeline, share this with your friends and, and groups, because this information, we definitely want everybody to get out so that it can really help them enhance their health. So go ahead, Lynn. Or Cheryl, I should say. Oh, that's okay. So would you like me to play this video that that that, that we got here? Yeah, I'd say let's go ahead and play that. And and what uh, would you like me to uh, show the advertisement that we got from Medea first, or I think that would be perfect. And then okay. I'll share the screen. So you go ahead and do okay. that. Okay. Fantastic. So here we go, folks. Last night during the broadcast, we got some information from the Who, and uh, Cheryl, you want to tell them who the Who is? The Who <laughs> is uh, probably also a band, but yes, <laughs> yes, it's 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 a band it's it's like journey. It's really the World Health Organization. So, exactly. World Health Organization is you know our our leaders in giving us this information. So they're they're the go to and the give to, and so there are there are, they provide our guidelines. And so exactly. with, with this new coming in, this is really. Um, not even 18 hours, no, about 20 hours. Um, no, not even, maybe 18 hours old now. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got this document, doc, document from The Who, and we want to tell you a little bit about it, <clears throat> excuse me, and what it says. Okay, so what they shared is that The Who considers airborne precautions for medical staff after study shows that the coronavirus can survive in air. And so many people from the onset had thought that the coronavirus could survive and was an airborne virus. So now after much deliberation, the WHO is conveying that it is in fact an airborne virus and they're not too sure if heat will cause it to kind of break apart and go away, but they're instructing us to be very, very cautious. It is said that the virus is transmitted through droplets or little bits of liquid, mostly through sneezing and coughing. Dr. Maria Van Kerkhoff, head of whose emergency uh, diseases and Zunanis unit told reported during a virtual news conference on Monday, uh, when you do an aerosol generating procedure like in a medical care facility, you have the possibility to what they call aerosolize these particles, which means they can stay in the air a little bit longer. So when they say aerosolize, exactly what they mean is this. You ever take a spray, a hair spray can and you spray that and even after several seconds later, the mist of that is still in the air. So that's kind of what they mean, kind of to give you a, a short idea of what they're trying to say. So she also added that it's very important that healthcare workers take additional precautions when they're working on patients and doing those procedures so that they're not affected, okay? So what we have for you, we have a video that uh, Cheryl is going to share with us at this juncture. And we're going to move over here so you can see that. Okay, here we go, Cheryl. Okay, beautiful. So I'm going to play this now for you. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, my name is Dr. Badra. I'm an emergency physician working on the front lines in Canada. I'd like to share with you what's happening on the hospital front, something that most people right now are not seeing, and I hope to God they never see. This virus is spreading so fast in the world because it's such a cunning little virus. Most viruses are either spread quickly 
like the flu, or they're serious, like SARS. But this one is both. What are the main reasons why it's spreading like fire is because it starts to spread even before you know you have it. I might be spreading the virus right now and not even know it until I get sick tomorrow or the next day. The numbers that you see in the media are not accurate. They show only the people who have been tested that are positive. There are so many more people out there who have it, who are spreading it, and we don't even know about them because they haven't been tested. Canada is doing a pretty good job. We've recently increased our testing in the past few days, but it's going to get a lot worse. The healthcare system, the workers are doing the best we can. I might sound like an alarmist, but I can live with that. In fact, I'll fall over in happiness if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to stress the importance of what public health is trying to tell us. We need to get away from each other. Don't have friends or parents over. Don't go to large gatherings. FaceTime your friends, call them, email them, do whatever you have to do. Just don't go see each other. Don't be in close distance to each other. Don't take your kids to the playground. In fact, why don't you act like you have it? Act like you will get it. That's the way that you'll help yourself from getting it. And that's the way that you'll help stop it from spreading to your family. If you have to go out for groceries, the pharmacy, and wash your hands, don't touch your face. That's how it gets in. Create some friends and family groups and take turns going to get groceries. Just remember to leave the groceries on the front door and not go in for a hug or a kiss. Your actions today will determine what I'm seeing two weeks from now. We can handle many sick patients, but there's a limit. After that, well, I'd rather not say. We can get more ventilator machines, but who is gonna run them? We only have a limited number of people, and even some of them are going to get sick. We don't have the time to train new ones, so we've already asked retired doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers to come back from retirement to help us. But even that's not going to be enough. I cannot say it enough. Social distancing, staying home, washing your hands. This is what's going to get us through this tough time. Not some magic medicine or vaccine. They are going to happen sometime in the future. If we can all do this together, then this disease will hit us like a small hurricane and pass with some moderate damage. If we don't do this, then a tsunami is coming. We all have to remember that all of humanity is suffering right now. The virus doesn't care what color your skin is, how much money you have. We're all in this together. We'll prove We'll pull through this together. The worst thing that I that could happen is that you did it for nothing. But the odds are that's not true. When you show up at my emergency room door, I promise to do what I can for you. In return, will you promise what you can do for me? Just stay home. Please. With that being said, we wanted to share that with you um, and let you know that we don't own the rights to that video. We were sent that video and uh, we'll go ahead and post who the video actually came from uh, other than our source that gave it to us uh, that's shown right there on the screen. And we also get uh, uh, some inquiries as to if healthcare insurance will cover concerns with the virus. Now, is that something that you might know, Cheryl? Because I do have some information on that as well. 
Well, you're in the U.S. and I'm in Canada, so I think it's a little different too. Yes. Um, I can't really answer to that, but here's what I can say, and and just in response to that video, and just in response to everyone. Um, so, you know, having worked with the health departments in different cities in the country, um, and also just looking at the messaging, you know, I think that we would all agree prevention is the best medicine. Yes. And and so when we're looking at prevention and what, what it is that we can do, I, I hear in the voice, the uh, in, in the voice and this video being very serious and really wanting to, to get our attention. So it's it's really not a casual conversation. So yes, and thank you for there. For, so prevention is the best medicine and what can we do? So I think that this really is uh, a tribute to, let's take a, let, let, let's take a little bit more seriousness about it. Yes. And let's, let's look at all of the guidelines and then let's also look at beyond. And that's what we're all about, uh, Lotus, and in and, and the next couple of days is beyond the, the basic guidelines. What can we do for our own immune systems, for each other? And uh, what, what are those tips and secrets that we can share so that we can all boost our immunity? Because again, it's all about prevention. Yes, I concur. And one thing that I like that you said is that please take it seriously. Um, because a lot of times people are not taking it seriously. And and maybe because we've never had such a, a impactful thing to hit the United States like this in so many years. So sometimes we may feel like we're almost in a horror movie. So for those of you that are feeling like that, I definitely understand. Yeah. But as uh, Cheryl said, please be sure to take it seriously because the primary thing is prevention. We have to take preventative measures to make sure that we are keeping ourselves safe. And I want to say hello to those of you that are coming on. We really appreciate it. We know that uh, you appreciate the work that we're doing. And if you like this this broadcast, please go ahead and put a three down below. Put a three down below. And if you think this is good stuff, go ahead and put down good stuff. Please go ahead and put down good stuff if you think this is good stuff. And a number Hello, three, Mary. like this broadcast. Okay. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So with that being said, hey, pretty, how you doing, pretty? It's good to see you, Rosemary. It's so good to see you. Rosemary is also another broadcaster who who has a great reach and she does some wonderful work out there. Pretty uh, Chopra, she is one of the uh, international. Uh, world-renowned writers, and she's a Guinness uh, world holder, uh, number one international best-selling author. So good to see you along with us for the ride, as well as Angela Elting. She is also a number one international best-selling author. So it's great to see you out of Washington, D.C. So thank you so much for joining us. So Lynn, I would really love to share uh, a few more tips with the folks before we kind of transition over to the broadcast that we got from um, the World Health Organization on whether or not insurances will cover uh, complications with the virus. But would you go ahead and share the other tips that you wanted to share? Well, you know what? We have so many that we've talked about, but if we look at one, and let's just talk about one being stressed because there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of unknowingness, and that provokes a lot of internal stresses. And so that can um, actually also influence our capability of good sleep or not. So when we look at ways that we can like de-stress, and although we may have heard this many times, there's a couple of really cool things that we can do with breathing techniques that we can all yes. learn from. And there's many breathing techniques, but I can tell you in spending time uh, in the last six months with um, relaxation and with some specialists, I think one of the greatest things we can do is take in those deep breaths and how we're taking them is what's important. And what's really cool, and you may know this, Lotus, is that when we're inhaling in to take a breath, it's not about our diaphragms coming in. It's actually right. the opposite. It's actually about our diaphragms going out so that when we're taking that deep breath in, 
our diaphragms are expanding out. Now, singers and musicians and horn players and trumpet players know this, <laughs> and, and some yes. yoga um, uh, and meditative people may know this, but the rest of us may not. So when we're taking in a deep breath, it's about our diaphragms expanding out. And one method that I've learned, um, and these are with my studies down in Arizona with some of our top holistic doctors, would be when we're breathing in, we can count to the, the count of four, like one, two, three, four, hold for one, two, three, four, and exhale through the mouth for seven. So do you want to try that with me, Lotus? Yes, I'm happy to try it with you. Okay, Let's and then our, our, and our listeners can, and our audience can also join us. So when we're yes. breathing in, we're breathing in, but expanding our diaphragm. So putting your hand on your tummy will help you to do that. Okay, so it. then we're going um, with with our nose only, not, not, not our mouth. We're inhaling with our nose. One, two, three, four, holding one, two, three, four four and exhaling through the mouth one two three four five six seven nice you know again. yeah and that can reset things just doing that two or three times can just bring down the heart rate can mm -hmm. just reset and refresh not unlike the computers when we hit refresh sometimes we just need that and it only takes a minute all right, fantastic. So really quickly, we have some other folks chiming in. Good to see you. Happy that you're along with us. And we did have a comment. We had a comment from Medea, and I want to share that comment with you. And she said, count your breath, inhale from deep belly, hold for two seconds, and then breathe out a second longer than what you inhaled uh till your belly is flat. That's great so, guidelines. Thanks. Thanks for those great guidelines. We like that. We appreciate it. Yeah. You know, deep breathing is great. It's absolutely great. Yeah. Awesome. Another free thing and it's a thing that you can do anytime or multiple times throughout the day mm -hmm. and before you go to bed. Yes, definitely. And if you do the controlled breathing, it will really help slow down your heart rate. Uh, it will also help you with any issues with blood pressure. And it'll kind of get you in a more peaceful state of mind and your body will feel more at peace and ready to retire for the night. And the other, the other great tip, and I know that you played some great music and thank you for bringing in Journey when we came in with the nice upbeat music. But the other thing, and there's different types of sound therapy and music therapy, but you know, listening to what you enjoy. For some people, it's something upbeat. And then for some people, it's something very relaxing. But whatever resonates with you that you enjoy, that's what you're going to, to really be able to like chill out with. So. Yes. For everybody, it's a little different. And I like both sides of music. It kind of depends on my mood. But I also, as somebody who is trained with classical music, yes. uh, and playing an instrument um, and playing the piano, I gravitate towards Royal Conservatory music and more, you know, concertos and baglatellis and things like that. So that's my kind of go-to stuff when I want to actually play music. Yes. But when I want to listen to music, it's um, it's it's either easy listening, um, and you know, seventies, eighties, and um, or otherwise, it's like stuff like Journey. How about you, Lotus? What do you like to listen to? Well, my my choice is I usually uh, mess around a little bit with my bass guitar and my keyboard. I love the keys a little bit. Uh, I love classical music. I love Beethoven. I love Bach. So sometimes if I have visitors, they'll hear me playing that uh, because it really is, is great brain music. If you look at some of the studies, it, it, it even talks about that. It really helps with brain functioning and it helps to calm you. And it also helps for your brain to be a little more alert. So that's one of the reasons why I really like it. And for me, it's just soothing. I am eclectic though. I like all types of music. I love country music. Oh, um, me too. I so love country <laughs> music. Uh, I love, I, I, I really like rap, but I'm more like old school rap where there's not any profanity or anything in it. So yeah. I really like clean rap. Let me just say that. Let me say, say okay. clean rap. I love clean rap. And um, I love rock and roll. I uh, love Tina Turner. Of course, she's the queen of rock and roll. Um, and and I love, love, love the uh, Barrett sisters. And, and we just recently lost... Um, 
Miss Billy um, Barrett Green Bay, which is um, a family friend. And I would say a, a, a close, almost relative of a great friend of mine named Tracy R. Kincaid. Um, love the Barrett sisters, gospel, just amazing. Mm-hmm. And uh, just so, so many other different genres of music. Like I said, I'm very eclectic. So I, I love all of it and, and some in more moderation than others. No, no, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear, and me too. And hey, I didn't know you like country music, and like that's yeah. one of my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite uh, genres of music too. Um, you and I will have to swap some songs from time to time. Uh, I, I keep my list on my phone, and at any time, I'm, I'm ready to listen and I'm ready to do a little karaoke. So I definitely tell you. If you're looking to relieve some levels of stress, that internal stress, please don't hesitate to go ahead and start using the opportunity to do some karaoke. Uh, Lynn, the other night I sent you a, a little message uh, from Terrence Leffridge, Mr. Unstoppable. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? I he did. was doing like a house party. The frequency <laughs> was off the Richter scale. It was amazing because it's a way to raise the frequency and also raise the awareness about if you're feeling a little down or if you're feeling a little depressed because of the current circumstances, you can in a moment's notice, bam, change that. And one of the ways that you can change it is by acknowledging that it's happening, but also have a power song that you go to. Have a group of people you can call up and say, all right, let's get on Zoom. Let's get on Facebook. Let's have a real house party. That's right. And this is something the kids can get involved in. It's something for the whole family. And did you know, a little bit of trivia here. Did you know the who, um, what profession Mm -hmm. lives the longest? What what, What profession or what professional um, mm-hmm. tends to have the longest lifespan? Probably dancers because they're, they're always working on their cardio. And most of the time, in, in my opinion, because I love to dance, when they're dancing, they're feeling a sense of joy. They're happy and they're probably a lot less stressed. Why? Because they're being really proactive at relieving that stress. Let's see what some of our our, our audience and our listeners like. Hey, put, put yeah. in the comments, put in the live comments what you think it is, and I'll tell you. Actually, maybe we'll come back to that because I'd like to keep people guessing on that one. I love that. I love that. And maybe we'll back. back to that later. But if you know, you can't forget. <laughs> right, right. So if you know what profession lives the longest, okay, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. Right. We want to know because guess what? Cheryl's going to tell us and she's That's not right. going to forget. Okay, <laughs> But we want to know who knows you may be on with us and you may be a part of that profession, right? That's you right. That's that right. Profession. Yeah. I wonder if teachers are a, a part of it. And I know you're not going to tell us now, but I, I'm asking because I had the pleasure of reading a wonderful book this morning uh, by Medea. And and she was she was on with us. And what we did, we encouraged folks to let the children come in. And I I read a story uh, to them from one of Medea's books. And it was the special powers of or you have special magical powers. That's what it was. Special magical powers. So I got to tell you, it was great. But something I learned along the way that you can't kind of play a a video behind it, even if you give credit to the person who the video belongs to, because sometimes Facebook will block you. But I'll tell you, that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And those of you that are home with your children, you don't want to keep them in front of the TV all day long. But from time to time, I know there is plenty of people out there right now that's working on reading to kids right here on Facebook Live. Okay, and it's great, clean, fun. Um, I think Annie Koshy is getting ready to do one of the readings. Uh, Melissa, she just did one of the readings. Our guest that's going to be on the uh, Kevin Thornton Wellness Architect Show tonight from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, she actually read one of Medea's books. I want to say she did it on the 20th or something like that. Uh, And it's great. 
So yeah, I, I challenge all of you, try doing that as well because it'll relieve your stress, it'll relieve the children's stress, and it'll also relieve their parents or their grandparents' stress because you're taking the time to give back to the community. You know what? I would like to acknowledge one of our listeners here in our live comments. Can I do that? Yeah. Please do. Okay. Please so, do. Hi, Robert. How are you? It was hey, nice, yeah. uh, nice having you in last night. And you know what? I'm also in Facebook. <laughs> He's <a> Facebook <laughs> no, but I want to acknowledge Robert. I do. I want to acknowledge him because he also wrote here in the chat, hey, ladies, today I've taken work off. Awesome. I'm relaxing and it's OMG. Um, yeah. What a feeling. I don't like it. And as an yeah. entrepreneur, you know, it's that that's an unfamiliar feeling because you're always on the go, go, go. However, I'm doing it because really it's a concern and a passion yeah. to make take care of his family. Okay. And, you know, you can't do that if your health gets worse. So, you know what? Yeah, you know what? I, I acknowledge you and salute you because um, yeah. as you know, addiction to work and workaholic, you know, and I think we all have some of that in us when we're entrepreneurs, some more mm -hmm. than others. And um, you know what? It's a it's an effort. It's a very conscious effort. Yes. It's a fight within oneself sometimes too to take that yes. time because you feel guilty. You want to keep going, but you know, you, you can't be you can't put the guilt on your health. So good for you, Robert. Exactly. Thumbs up to you, Robert. I'm super proud of you. Uh, you, you cannot put a price on your health and that's unequivocal. So thank you for sharing that Lynn and, and drawing my attention to that because we, we all need to be um, accountable one for, to ourselves and for ourselves, but also we can be accountability agents to one another Absolutely. to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. And Angela Elting said, our health is uh, our number one priority. And yes. that's so true. That's so true. And uh, I would love to know if there's any secrets or anything people want to share about what they do yeah. uh, mm -hmm. after making their health their number one priority. Exactly. So please go ahead and make your comments down below. Let us know how you are making your health the number one priority because we already see Robert J. Moore is kind of taking the day off from working and he's kind of pushing himself to get more sleep instead of pushing himself forward to work, work, work and not pay attention to and that. And your health. body will thank you. Exactly. Exactly. Lily says health is wealth. That is so true. That is so true. And thank but you also. We uh, were Robert talking Lotus, about that because if you have $10 million, mm -hmm. it's irrelevant because that's not going to buy you. Exactly. Protection against a, con a contagion as such. So you know what? Um, if anyone ever had any doubt, if your health is your wealth, I think these times are bringing it to our attention pretty loudly. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I saw earlier that um, Medea had put something in here called Yoga Master, and that's phenomenal. Yoga is an excellent way to get by. I've been practicing yoga myself. How about you, Cheryl? You know, I've tried a few different types of yoga. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm more of, of the meditative breathing. I have right. gone to different types of classes, including the heat dish classes and of, of all places, yes. Arizona. So uh -huh. I don't know that I'm going to do that. So the people who do. No, I think yoga is absolutely great. I really do. I'm not a, a, someone who's regular with yoga, but I do have my yoga mat. I do do the po I do do poses. I do do uh, yoga breathing. Awesome. And I actually think I'm inspired with this uh, broadcast today and with the sharing of people. So thank you, because I think I'm going to spend half an hour and YouTube and 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 and, and do a session. Awesome, awesome, so awesome. Sharing. See, that's a power of sharing. Amen. I concur with that. I concur with that. Yeah. So, so then I, I know folks wanted to find out about the um, insurance things. And now folks, I got to tell you, we are not the end all and, and be all. We get our information from, um, you know, the CNBC.com and, and the, the World Health Organizations. And we put them in here to give credit, you know, where credit is due so that, you know, people understand, um, you know, we're giving you the best information that we are exposed to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you see this and if you hear something, 
uh, that you may or may not like, uh, you know, just know that we in no shape, form, or fashion say that they're right or they're wrong. It's We're just delivering it. Exactly. It's just in the messengers. Delivering, right. And and we don't we don't own um the rights to any of the vehicle uh, vehicles. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we don't own the rights to any of the, the videos or anything like that, but they've been made public. Uh, so therefore, it belongs to the public, so to speak. So uh, we just want you to know that. So, so Angela, Angela just wrote um, that she's yes. currently doing more exercise and she's doing a 30 day squat challenge. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, which is really, really great. So so that's and she's working from home. So that's an office yeah. challenge. But people are doing it at home, which is so cool and incorporating more plant based and alkaline mm -hmm. foods and daily yoga and stretching. So, you know what, that's really, really great. I'm gonna comment to that if I can, because I'm also doing a squat challenge and my challenge is doing, um, from somebody who doesn't do a lot of squats, but I really wanna get the, the bigger, larger muscles. It's really easy to do upper body, but it's a little yes. more of a challenge to do lower bodies and work with your, your quads mm -hmm. and do squats. So I'm looking at moving that glucose around and really wow. getting my insulin sensitivity working better for me. So with the squats, I'm doing 60 squats a day. Awesome. Not all the squats, but I'm breaking it out throughout the day awesome. and adding that to my daily program. So that's, yes. that's a noticeable change. Awesome. And that's good. So thank you for talking about that. And I want to know, you know, what, what number of squats are people doing in a day? Because maybe that can inspire me. So Angela, let us know. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I'm also doing that same squat oh. challenge because Kevin Thornton from the Wellness Architect Show actually challenged several of us to start doing it. And so we, we've got it set up on a calendar and there's so many that you need to do each day. So if you're interested in getting that information, since Angie put it up, I say check out Angie, hit her up and ask her to shoot that information out to you. So those of you that aren't doing the challenge yet that would like to do the challenge can come on and come on board and help do it. So now I've got one from Medea. Medea says that uh, I do daily meditations and daily self Reiki as uh, I'm also a Reiki master and practitioner. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So Medea, you know what? I'm so connected with you because you know what? I love it. Affirmations, meditations, and like you um, doing uh, a Reiki master as well. I really, I spend time in the morning as part, part of my power hour and I do that Reiki and I actually do the symbols and um, you know, I, I it's, it's just um, nurturing. It's just so nurturing. So thank you. Thank you for, for, for sharing that. And for the other audience um, listeners, you know, it's like when there's something that resonates with you that really makes you feel quiet and mm -hmm. still inside, whether it's Reiki, whether it's meditations, affirmations, no matter what it is. And for some people, it's 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 faster movements and jogging. I yes. used to be one of those people. I was a marathoner for 12 years. So that was my thing then. And sometimes things change. But yes, yeah, so so doing your self-care practices, let's call them let's call them conscious self-care practices. Yes. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Medea. That's so great. That's, That's great. awesome. That is so awesome. So with that being said, we have given you all some tips on how you can be healthy, some physical exercises that you can do. We've shared some information from the World Health Organization that should help you help yourself and help others stay protected. And if you're not being protected, go ahead and start implementing some safe protective measures because really each and every life is important just as your life is important. And we want to see you take extra good care of yourself so you can take extra good care of those who love you and depend on you. You know, I one thing that I noticed the other day when, when I was out and about, now I've talked to many people. Um, and so many people are ordering online for groceries and right. they can be delivered, right? So, yes. so that's a, a service that's available. But there are people that are going out to grocery stores and here, and I'm sure it's probably in the States. I was speaking to a friend of mine in uh, Fort Myers. Mm 
right. uh, Florida uh, the other day. And there's certain hours. So seniors are, are certain hours in the morning. Um, and then there's staggered times throughout the day for people to go to the grocery store. Right. But, you know, I do recommend that you do wear and take gloves. And, you know, if you don't, have plastic bags that you that you have or that you use from the produce section mm -hmm. swipe the cart um handle yes. and use those um right. if you're in a pinch because right. it's only gonna it's only gonna help you know and the other thing that that we do too is when we're out and about we leave our things in the vehicle for a good mm -hmm. two hours just because yes. in case it touched anything. So we have plastic yes. that's put out for, for the, where we put the groceries. And then right. we leave it there. And then we'll come back after a couple of hours. And then with our gloves, because then we're at home, we can go out and get them. Super so. smart. Super smart. Another thing, if I may sure. add, that, that I've been doing before I bring any boxes, when I go to the mailbox or when the delivery driver brings things here, I only go and and get it with my gloves and most recently i started wearing my mask and eye protection as well because of course our eyes are music mu mucous membranes yeah um so i go out and i get it but i don't bring it in the house i spray it with lysol and i leave it there so that the lysol can do its job yeah. And then when I bring it in the house, again, I use gloves. When I open the box, if it's plastic bottles or anything like that, I take a, a towel um, or a you can take a paper towel, if you will, and spray it down with Lysol and wipe the bottles down because it's been said that it stays on plastic for an extra duration. So right. you want to be very careful of that. And on a later broadcast, we'll tell you, we'll give you the numbers that right. we've seen from um, the World Health Organization, what they purport is the longevity of it. So we just say, don't, don't move forward with fear, move forward with faith and precaution take caution take yeah. uh, safety measures to do it and, and about the about the garbage bags because a lot of people don't have gloves so the garbage bags are phenomenal that's a great idea even sandwich bags i would imagine would be uh, better than nothing well you know i was talking to some travelers coming from the united states to canada uh -huh. and they're driving because they've driven because a lot of them are snowbirds right so, so even if they drive to the far west coast in California or the east coast down to Florida, they're driving back. Right. You know, they've been told to come home. So um, what I had suggested to some of them that are clients of mine, mm -hmm. with my coaching programs, I said, here's what you do. You're going to grab those Ziploc bags and you're going to put them over the remotes mm -hmm. and you're going to like use them like for touching door handles and things that right. you can and mm -hmm. honestly dispose of them. You know, you want to have one bag where you're going to dispose of them because you can't be you can't be preventive enough. And things like light switches, things like the handles of the um, faucets and things like that. You want to right. be able to have your have your wipes for them, too. So just exactly. a couple of, of travel things there. Exactly. So listen, I, I want thanks for sharing that first and foremost. And I want to share this. We've got Wanda D. Hollis all the way out of Atlanta on with us. And Zanai Zaki Zamari Mayel is also on with us. She's watching. So thanks. Okay. Good to see you. I really appreciate you guys being here. And we, we just appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. And we appreciate all that you do to help relieve the stress that's in many of our communities and just to spread the love to lead with love and not fear. So thank you ladies for joining us and everyone else that's on that's joined us. We appreciate you and all that you do. So Cheryl, we've got another day or so coming up. We do. Yeah, where we're going to be talking about some more information. And I've got a surprise for you that's going to make me put on a sweatsuit. And Linda, Cheryl knows what it is. Oh, Cheryl yeah. knows yeah. what it is. And we're not going to share it with you right now. But Cheryl is saying, yeah, Lotus, you need to do it. So I'm going to yeah. take the challenge and I'm going to share something with you guys that's going to help you. It's going to help you feel great. It's going to help you be healthy in the next day or so. We're going to share that with you. So um, with that being said, Lynn, is there any closing thoughts that you would like to share? And I'm, and I'm getting uh, uh, someone else sharing some information with me, but please go ahead and share your thoughts. 
Okay, so so really, um, and you were talking about upcoming shows. So I think tomorrow we're yes. having our our broadcast at 7 p.m. Yes. So that's going to be Tuesday at 7 p.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. And as I said, we're going to be bringing in some of the, the really great immune boosting supplements that you can't live without. Um, some of these are actually in pandemic stages with people being deficient in them. And yes. honestly, I'll share a staggering statistic because it's not something that you'd think. Right. Um, so I'll leave it at that. And so we'll keep people um, wondering about that and some herbs and spices that are going to be really helpful too. And how and many different ways to use them. We're going to actually physically show them to you. Yes. And I don't know. I'm going to show you. Can I show here? I, yeah. I'll show you a tip today if you can see this. Can you see this in the street? Is that fruit? <laughs> well, oh, this is, wow. This is um, red. I have a red kale. I have some cabbage. I have some spinach. I have some. You know what they are. Let me show you here. They're actually called spicy lentil lentil crunch. Awesome. So this is good because there's sprouts. Good enzymes in there. I love sprouts. And what I do is I put in some avocado, uh -huh. some zucchini, and I put in some raspberries, a few cranberries, and some pomegranates, a few bites of strawberries, and the lemon. Oh, sorry. Maybe you can't see it. Sorry. Yeah. Awesome. That looks delish. And you know what I'm doing? The, the, these are all wonderful because they're raw, but take a look at this. Yes. And I am, uh -huh. um, you know, there are hemp hearts, there are yes. chia seeds, there are flax seeds, but yes. all you need, and I'm going to show you this. Where's my container? Oh, here it is. So I'm going to show you all you really need is this much that, uh, you know, I actually sprinkle it, sprinkle it on my salads. There's many ways to use this. And um, at our websites, we have all kinds of different um little tips like this but what it really helps to do is hemp seed if anybody tries this let me know because they have a great nutty flavor and i'll tell you they're really great for heart health for lowering blood pressure for internal inflammation and helping neutralize higher than normal blood sugar levels and that's because of the fiber content in it so it really helps to combat high sugars and really helps to intercept them so that's really important for people who um, have pre-diabetes and most don't know it and it also is really great for um, people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes now the other thing that i add and i always have these because i grind these up are flax seeds and so when we're talking omega threes and omega nines, this is where we get the, like the real great punch. And you can combine these together. And so what I do is, I don't know if you can see me doing all this or not, but what I do is I take my measurer and then I just, let me see here, add another, because you know what? We never get enough fiber. And so that I just add this, where are we here? <laughs> and then I just go nuts because I love the flavor. So those are nice little tips, guys. Awesome. I love it. And some of you, it, this is so funny because Cheryl and I have a lot of the same thing. And, and this funny. is funny. what's in that bag that she showed you. I had a bag of it and we dumped it out into this. We sprinkle this out on our salads and everything. So Cheryl, show them the bag again that, that you had earlier. Oh, the hemp hearts? Yeah. Yeah. So this is what it looks like, the hemp hearts. Okay. This is what it looks like. And it's small. You can throw it on your salad. Like she said, you can throw it in anything. I even yeah. put it in my oatmeal. It yeah. is so, so wonderful. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you can also, um, you can use chia seeds. Yep. Chia seeds are great for you. Okay. Chia seeds, you know, when you wet them, they're, they're kind of I guess gelatinous, if you will. So just be careful if you like chia seeds inside your water or your juice, it'll it'll have a gelatinous type uh, texture to it. But also you can get, like she was saying, you can get these flax seeds, flax seeds, amazing. Now this is the, the ground meal um, pressed flax seeds, but you can also find other flax seeds that have to be ground, okay? But if you get these, these are much easier to work with because the ones that are not ground, your body cannot absorb the properties that it needs from it. So you really need it to be be ground like this. Yeah, you need a, you need a, a, a the small ground. And that's exactly. what you can actually do in, I don't know about you, but I have like a turbo, like we're talking a tur turbo. It's not a blender. It's actually a turbo ninja, I think. And um, 
you know, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you can put cement in there and I grind everything in there. So great ways to use all of these types of seeds are in smoothies, which are easy to do. Um, and they provide a great flavor. But the other way that I use them is not just in salads, but I actually use them in, if I'm doing a cod, a nice Icelandic fish, um, then what I'm doing is when I'm putting a little bit of coconut flour around them, I put in some of the, they have oh, some of the flax delicious. in the, in that and delicious. use it in, in that way. And I actually put it in stews awesome. and like you said, on oatmeal, yes. you can use, awesome. use them in so many ways. Okay. I'm going to share this with you and you can make this for your kids too. Okay. okay. So let me, let me share this with you. We, we keep a small little glass jar because we put it on everything. So instead of going into the big bag or the big container, we keep it in a small little glass jar and this have the hemp seeds in it. This has the flax seeds in it. This has the chia seeds in it. And it also has crushed roasted sesame seeds in this particular blend. And, and of course, like I said, the flax seeds. So you're getting your omegas three, six, and nine in there as well. But Cheryl, let me tell you what I do. Okay. Many people that know me closely know that I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, right? Okay. But what I do is I'll take a, just peanut butter, no jelly, chop up some bananas and put on there yeah. and, and dump this on top of yeah. it. Okay. And then if I want something a little sweet, I'll take that manuka honey. Oh, there you go. A little bit of manuka honey on there because you know it's good for your digestive tract. And I'll eat that sandwich. And it, let me tell you, is the bomb. Well, you know what? That's amazing. It's just so funny that we're co-discovering things about each other because we're right on the same wavelength. <laughs> yes, yes. With these things. Now, yes. Medea says, Medea was just saying, I bake with it. So I would yes. love, yeah, like I would love to, to learn how you bake with it because I think that would be super value added bonus. Exactly. Um, and you know, like you, I have to put things in a jar and I put them in my purse because if they're not handy and if they're not right there, it's just too easy <laughs> to forget exactly. it. Exactly. So my counters are full of stuff because if they're not in front of me, you know, I'll miss it. Yes. So I, I got to tell you, folks, I've had a wonderful time here with you today. Cheryl, of course, as usual, you always bring some great information, some great news. And I'm so happy that we were able to do this broadcast. And I'm looking forward to our upcoming broadcast. And for those of you that's just coming on, we have had a magnificent time. We talked about ways to relieve external and internal stress. We talked about things that can help you uh, relieve some of the strains and pains of diabetes. And we talked about some great things that you can use to eat more healthy, to, to really observe a healthy diet. But I think one of the most important things we talked about is the fear that many of us are facing with the pandemic. And instead of walking in fear, we want to help you and, and, and invite you to walk in faith and have the knowledge that you need so that you can be healthy. And uh, I got to tell you, Cheryl, I've had fun doing this. How about you? I've had a great time and we have one thing we must do. Yes. So I'm not sure in the, in the, um, in the comments, if anyone guessed on uh, the profession or the type of person who lives the longest, but my drum roll. <laughs> Who lives the longest? Um, our um, orchestra conductors. Oh wow! Orchestra conductors live the longest. Wow, that's amazing. Well, music—you know, the high vibration of music and being in that space. And I remember when I was in um, dental school, and uh, when I was training in traditional medicine, and we had this quiz, this test, and I and I never forgot it because it was orchestra conductors at the very top of the list and then it was dentists at the very bottom of the list <laughs> now um wow orchestra conductors awesome yeah so that yes yeah, so thank you very much uh angela now i just wanted to acknowledge medea as well because she was talking about baking with um okay so angela okay so we were so I'm just looking here how people are baking with it. Okay, so with baked goods and on roasting vegetables. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so that's a good way to use um, those seeds too. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, lots of great information. 
So yes, yeah, so uh, please join us tomorrow at seven, no, six, uh, 7 p.m. And um, again on Wednesday. So thank you, thank you everyone. And thank you, Lotus. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.